So Fallout 4 can be frustrating sometimes. I actually experienced a lot of that frustration while filming this video, but I'll talk about that at the end. Fortunately, we do have the heroes of our game, that being mod authors, to fix a lot of these frustrations. So in this video, I'm going to show you 10 more quality of life mods. This is going to take some of the miscellaneous things in the game and make them either a little bit better or just a little bit simpler for you as the player, maybe getting you to enjoy that playthrough just a bit more. If you guys do enjoy the content, you can subscribe. Again, I think this is like my fourth or fifth iteration in this series, so I'll have the other ones linked down below or at the end of this video. Video, but with that, we will just jump into it. There's been countless times in my survival playthroughs where just I'll see a lobbing Molotov from very far away and it somehow lands right at my feet and takes me out instantly. Well, realistic ranged accuracy for NPCs is going to fix that. It's going to make it so a lot of the NPCs you encounter in Fallout 4 will have more kind of appropriate accuracy. Every enemy you encounter is no longer going to have laser precision. But something that actually is kind of cool about this mod is it divides it up into little categories. So insects, raiders, and super mutants will have the worst accuracy by far. But then when you actually get into some of the mercenaries like the gunners or even certain legendary raiders or higher tier enemies among the previous groups, the accuracy will be higher. And then finally, as you actually get onto some of these synths or turrets you do encounter in the game, they will by far have the highest accuracy. This makes certain aspects of the game, like encountering a few raiders or a few super mutants, quite a bit easier, but when you actually get to a high tier synth, they'll pretty much never miss and that kind of sucks, but it also feels fairly balanced. So I think some of you guys will really like this one and some of you won't. Throw money at Sim Settlements is going to make it so now within Sim Settlements, you can basically walk up to a plot and then actually invest in it to upgrade it to the next level. So the proper way to experience Sim Settlements is there's going to be several factors going into what actually gets a plot to upgrade to the next level. If one of those criteria aren't met, then the plot won't upgrade. Well, this mod, it's going to one, be extremely expensive to upgrade plots. There's going to be various prices, but all of them are in the thousands of caps. And honestly, for me at least, the main use I would get out of this mod is with actual custom plot types that you do download. Maybe you just wanna check out the tier two or three of this new mod, and this is gonna be an easy and simple way to actually get there. Then we have Fast Start Reunions by SKK. So if you played through Fallout 4 more than once, you'll probably realize that the intro part of the game is super mundane. You have to walk to Diamond City, save Nick Valentine, deal with Piper. Well, what this mod's going to do is basically skip all of that and place you right at the end of the Reunions quest. You still have the option as to how to deal with Kellogg and that dialogue is left open, but all the steps in between the start of the game and actually getting to Kellogg are removed. So you can just instantly walk to Fort Hagen if you want to do so. This is predominantly geared for those of us who are on our third, fourth, or even fifth playthrough, and I know for me, it's definitely going to save a lot of time and just kind of needless frustration with some of those earlier quests. You know exactly what happens, but especially on like survival playthroughs, it can be very time extensive to walk everywhere, take out all the enemies, and just kind of getting to the interesting parts where you actually have branching options is a lot more fun. So there's a ton of follower overhauls for Fallout 4, ranging from changing their appearances to actually increasing their viability in combat. Well, Alex's follower overhaul is actually going to do something different, and I particularly like this one. Basically, your various followers are now going to actually pick up items. Deacon's always talking about sharing the wealth, but now he's actually going to do so. As time passes, followers are going to accumulate various items depending on that follower. The lore-friendly explanation is they're picking up a along the way on their travels with you. So for example, Deacon's going to pick up a bunch of food in addition to caps. Pretty much all of them pick up caps, but it's meant to be customized to the follower. So Curie's gonna get medical supplies, Hancock's gonna get various chems as well as food and caps, and all around, it's a pretty cool improvement to the companions. It makes them certainly more viable, but in a way that a lot of other mods haven't really addressed. So there's actually this glitch, or I assume it's a glitch, in Fallout 4 where third person perspective players won't actually get the same move speed buffs and just in general walk slower than first person perspective players. Well the mod third person movement speed fix is going to fix that. That's pretty much the whole mod. So if you're someone who plays in third person and you want to get some of those speed buffs, because especially when you were using like a certain armor or something that actually buffed your speed in the game, you would notice it was distinctively slower than when you were in first person. Well, no longer. You could have all that resolved and enjoy looking at your character from behind. 
All right, so it's almost become a meme at this point as to how bad I am at hacking. It's been commented on videos and I, I know. Well, the mod easy hacking is gonna make my life and all of your lives who watch me do live streams and things like that a lot easier. This mod removes all of the hacking options and just gives you the password right away. I know this one might be a little bit more controversial because it literally just is a cheat, but at the end of the day with hacking in Fallout 4, when you actually get to the terminal, you know you're gonna be able to do it. If you expend your chances, you just have to back out and wait there and it just all around for me at least is a frustrating process. I can sit there and spend 10 minutes trying to get into it, but this is going to save me a lot of time and a lot of headaches. Now we do have realistic conversations in Fallout 4. This mod's actually going to do several things. One of the most obvious though is actually make it so companions don't have like that awkward pause in between sentences anymore. Like sometimes in dialogue there would just be like a few seconds where nobody was talking and it's like, uh, you're right there buddy? But just overall, the social aspect of other NPCs is a bit smarter. I think it's the best way to describe it. NPCs will eat more and at more appropriate times. They're not going to seem as robotic as they're walking around settlements or all of them talking to you at the same time. They'll address you from time to time, but other times they'll have nothing to say and that's obviously totally okay. It actually is a particularly cool mod. I especially noticed some of the changes while you're walking around some of your settlements, especially the larger ones, but it also affects just talking NPCs in general throughout the game and I think it's a great mod to download and make some changes that kind of should have been there to begin with. Then we do have the lever action reload fix. This is a mod I've been using for quite a while and it's probably in my like top 10 favorite mods for Fallout 4. The lever action in Fallout 4 is frustrating. If you shoot once, you have to reload five bullets and that takes a while. This mod's gonna fix that. And this one in particular actually works in both first and third person. Some of the older ones only worked in first person and were fairly glitchy. I think it makes the lever action one of the most fun to use and viable weapons in the game. And if you haven't downloaded it, I would definitely recommend doing so. Then we have the crafting highlight fix. Why is it that Bethesda decided to cover up or kind of give a big overlay on your armors as you're customizing them in workbenches? It really doesn't make any sense and it's fairly frustrating when you're trying to find just the right paint job for the occasion. This mod's gonna leave in a noticeable but still subtle outline so you know which armor piece is selected, but it's not so intrusive that you can't see what's actually going on under it. You'll still be able to edit the color options, scroll through paint jobs, and I have to back out after each one to actually see the changes taking effect. And last but not least, we do have Mine and Trap Detector. This is actually going to be an armor item you can put on your character, and basically for the cost of fusion cells, it'll alert you to mines in your vicinity. So at first glance, this kind of seemed fairly overpowered, but I think the way it's implemented actually makes it quite well balanced. First and foremost, it takes up an armor slot, so it's definitely gonna have an opportunity cost associated with it. If you have that really nice legendary right arm, well, you can't use that anymore. And in addition, the range is fairly short. It's something that's upgraded but at the lower levels, it's not going to tell you mines are halfway across the room. They're only going to have to be fairly close to you, and you could still definitely trip some of them if you're not being careful. And then finally, the fact that it actually cost fusion cells, which if you're playing on survival, you're going to have to pretty noticeably take them with you. I know for me, a lot of the times I just use ballistic ammo, so I typically don't have those on me in general. If you run out, then this thing's going to stop working and you're on your own again. Either way, it's pretty much gonna wrap it up for this video. So why did I say this was very frustrating to make? I ran into more glitches with this video than I have with any of my recent ones as of late. Things from being stuck in endless load screens that happened like two or three times. The certain mods just not working, so having to re-download or switch to a new mod manager to actually get them working. Oh, and of course, then you also got the crashes, because what would it be without crashes? And then if all that wasn't enough, of course, the glitches associated with certain mods where you can't exit Vault 111. And then finally, when I thought I had all of it sorted out, I was like, all right, cool, I got all the glitches gone. I look back at my recording, and for whatever reason, it was recording at like 12 FPS. So yeah, needless to say, it took a little bit longer than I hoped for. Although so a lot of people are actually asking, hey, how'd you do on that test? Finally got my test grade back. I actually got 100. So yeah, that's that's pretty cool. It was like 25% of my grade. So now we just got to do it three more times and we're good to go. Either way, as always, again, and thank you all for watching. I do hope you enjoyed this video and I hope to see you all next time. Later.